Hello and welcome to another episode of Business PNG. We're here at the Hilton Port Moresby for the third annual Papua New Guinea and Petroleum and Energy Summit, where we spoke to some industry experts about the industry as well as the challenges it's currently facing in this business environment. At the PNG Petroleum and Energy Summit last week, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill announced the date for the signing of the gas agreement for the U.S. $13 billion Papua LNG project. The gas agreement will set out the project benefits and returns among stakeholders. It will trigger the commencement of the front-end engineering and design phase of the Papua LNG project. Invite, uh... Papua LNG aims to develop the elk and antelope gas fields in the Gulf province. Today we are at the cusp of an agreement for a second LNG project with Total, the Papua LNG project. Again, as the first LNG project did for our country, it will quickly strengthen the growth of our country's economy and truly transform many lives in our country, more particularly in the Gulf province. The Total project is going to be signed on April the 5th, 2019. That is a targeted date for that agreement to be signed. O'Neill said the government was striving for a win-win agreement for all the developers and the people. He said the agreement would feature meaningful opportunity for local content in the project, a domestic market obligation, which will mandate the use of some project gas for domestic purposes, mainly electricity generation, to be marketed by state-owned Kumul Petroleum, and provisions for the future use of the project's pipeline by third parties. The advent of the Papua LNG project is expected to add two new LNG trains to the LNG plant at Caution Bay near Port Moresby, originally built for the PNG LNG project. Each train will have a capacity of 2.7 million tons of gas per annum. The state's nominee for the project, Como Petroleum, has already signaled its intention to take up its mandated maximum 22.5% share in the project. The Papua LNG project an investment of some 13 billion U.S. dollars will develop the health antelope gas fields. And they are suddenly going to produce close to 2.7 metric tons per annum, million metric tons per annum, and two trains has been developed in this Caution Bay where it is going to ensure that we remain competitive. Our government has learned from our past mistakes. And we are not ready to repeat those mistakes again. Today, I'm very proud to say that our Deputy Prime Minister and, of course, our Minister for Petroleum are leading a very strong negotiation team, making sure that we negotiate a project development that is also going to benefit the interest of our people. But it will also provide a fair physical environment for our development partners to maximize returns on their investment. I'm Ian Girari in Honolulu, and you're watching Business PNG. Welcome back. Tijit joins us for another edition of the Oxford Business Group Corner as he speaks to the Minister for Energy, Sam Basil, about good governance. Welcome to the OBG Corner. My name is Chiet Ritmeister, I'm the Editorial Manager, and today I really would like to talk with you about good governance. Good governance in the energy sector. We are, the, are at a very special location. Uh, we are at the Hilton Hotel, actually, uh, because here today the Energy and Petroleum Conference is held. It's the third edition. Uh, we also have a very special guest, that's Minister Sam Bezel. He has, been he has been member of the National Parliament since 2007 and he, has been, uh, he is now the Minister for Communication Technology and Energy. 
uh, Minister. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, energy is currently a very exciting portfolio to hold, we believe, because there are many developments going on. Today we have been talking about the domestic market obligation, about the gas agreements, but of course also how PNG can uh, leverage upon all those opportunities and resources available. What for you is currently at the core of your ministry and of your uh, policies? Well, my, my portfolio, as you said, is covers uh, communication and also energy. And I think uh, energy was uh, um, sort of um, in the past uh, attached to petroleum. But um, like I said in my speech, uh, when we took over energy, uh, I, when I took over energy, uh, we have to drive the policy aspect of things to make sure that we establish a policy and we have a policy in place. We're working now to complete the uh, National Energy Authority bill, which is now ready to be approved by National Executive Council. So we can um, we can collate every responsibilities from different stakeholders into one basket. So we can easily manage uh, uh, the um, energy uh, issues of Papua New Guinea. Yes, and that will eventually hold, of course, both to both uh, yes. both teams. Uh, it's good that you start about uh, regulation because, as I mentioned during the introduction. Uh, good governance is an important theme we are covering uh, this year, uh, especially after all the exciting times with APEC. It's good to see how PNG wants to deliver upon the promises, upon uh, well, what needs to be done to bring this country to the next level. Um, what does good governance mean uh, for you, uh, for you personally, and how will this impact how you currently lead uh, the ministry? Well, we. We want to make sure that um, uh, under the legislation that the uh, National Energy Authority, as I've said before, uh, it has been, uh, the energy issues has been fragmented and everybody has a say in, in energy. As you can see, different percentages, the IEEE, PNG Power is holding on to some of those responsibilities of uh, regulating the energy sector. So um, I really can't speak for everybody, but as I've said, as soon as the uh, um, uh, if we, as soon as we have the National Energy Authority uh, bill in place, yeah. we will have those responsibilities and I've committed the department to good governance in my speech, saying that we will take into account good governance to make sure that many issues and criticisms that we've been having in the past can yeah. be addressed. Yeah, because when you now talk, for example, with uh, the business sector and with private sector players um, regarding energy, regarding uh, the changes you now make with, with the, the, well, the policy you are now, uh, you're now elaborating upon, what are the main challenges companies face that you really would like to filter out with these changes? Uh, we, we understand that um, uh, when we talk about energy, we create interest in, in, in the independent power producing companies that comes in and register their interest. And uh, with the DMO to be signed off soon, uh, it has opened up the uh, opportunities for gas in energy production. So uh, a lot of companies, as you can see during presentation today, are talking about uh, how to uh, package the uh, gas on ships and then bring it to to areas where, or different provinces where they need uh, power, they will have an established power plant to supply those gas. So uh, uh, there are many ways of uh, rolling out IPPs, and I believe uh, PNG Power still plays a central role in making sure that um, the agreed prices under the PPA arrangement is, is agreed on and the best price, because all we want at the end of the day is to have a uh, cheap energy for the people of Papua New Guinea and the industries of Papua New Guinea. Like we all know that PNG has got a lot of natural resources. We must downstream revolution all these uh, natural resources and it all comes back to cheap energy. So yeah. access to cheap energy and affordable energy, sustainable energy is the theme of uh, our uh, drive that we want to make sure that we... Yeah. Exactly. And, and how do you see, because it's good that you mentioned now the, the domestic market obligation, which is, of course, we are here at the, the, the Petroleum Conference, the Energy and Petroleum Conference, which is a major, major team. Uh, what uh, the signing will be, or signing with Total will be on the 5th of April, yes. if I'm correct. Um, what can we expect in the short to midterm on that? Well, we, we, we will start talking about pinning down DMO's commitments, uh, not only in power generation, but we know that Petroleum Ministry has also embarked on or talked on, uh, highlighted on the petrochemical industry. So those things will be worked out as soon as we know uh, how much uh, gas is available for DMO's. But, yeah. but uh, it, in, in, 
in uh, talking about energy, we, we understand that uh, like the DMO has opened up uh, uh, talks on gas and people are interested in, in bringing the gas um, um, energy production into PNG power so that they can um, you know, have access to cheap power. Like uh, we understand that there are some uh, IPPs in currently engaged by PNG power that are well above uh, the acceptable rates yeah. and uh, that has uh, been passed on to the consumers and PNG is currently one of the expensive uh, yeah. power uh, yeah. per kilowatt per hour we, d we are experiencing it it's very expensive and people are talking about it so by having all those opportunities under DMOs to generate power by using gas we understand that the price will come down and I believe that uh, 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 Kumul Petroleum Holdings through its power uh, businesses are uh, talking about between six to eight cents and that's very cheap, yeah. very cheap and we believe that that can be passed on to the consumers. Yeah, but that must be very exciting, right, to, to be now the minister on this specific portfolio because now all these changes are happening, now you can make the biggest impact on, uh, on, on for the people. Yes, it's, it's very interesting but as you can see that uh, we do have aging infrastructures in terms of uh, transmissions and I think uh, IEEE and of course, PNG Power has come out loud about it, and uh, that we must uh, improve those infrastructures because we can have new generations, but yeah. uh, we must extend those to the rural areas. And uh, like we said, the four nations. Uh, we thank you for the APEC. Um, Prime Minister has uh, successfully delivered the APEC, and along it, we have commitments from uh, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, United States. Yeah. Uh, they have come forward to help with 1.5, committed 1.5 billion. US dollar to help Papua New Guinea uh, achieve its 70% electrification program to, to its citizens and uh, we are happy for that and in this year's uh, budget uh, the government has also set aside 30 million kina to help PNG Power uh, roll out its rural electrification program so we are now we must also be conscious about the aging infrastructure we must Put money in it to make sure that we have good uh, transmission yeah. lines. What do you see for the coming year or the coming two years, let's say, uh, that, as the main priorities in terms of infrastructure? I see that um, we will have some uh, uh, enough power uh, producing plants going on. Uh, we see that big projects are coming up in the mining industry. They will ask for more than 600 megawatts of power. Uh, the demand for rolling out rural electrification program and to people, the demand, the demand will stand at about 300 megawatt plus. So uh, I believe that um, we will ask for more power as time goes by, but with the existing commitments that we have with gas companies that are now showcasing their, their potentials, um, I believe that uh, in the next two, three years, we'll have some serious uh, power coming on, on, on the grid and we yeah. must now connect people. I'm Leanne Girari in Brisbane and you're watching Business PNG. Uh, part of the event we we, uh, we are currently focusing on is of course the site visit to the power plant and it will uh, will go online soon I, we hope but um, in terms of, of it's not just about generation right it's also about like you said distribution yes. transmission um, to what extent do you see there things can be also improved be better maybe in terms of regulation but maybe also in terms of more private sector involvement in, in our uh, uh, implementation of the national energy authority uh, bill, uh, we will ensure that uh, we have transparency in in our in our system in terms of having a ministerial committee uh, that vets and and and, and, co and collaborate on all issues before it goes to another level of NEC. And of course, we come down to the industry involvement. We have to make them involved in every aspects of energy so that we have transparency and good governance at all time. Like you, yeah. No, exactly. And one of those things is, of course, the rural electrification scheme, and of course, the the partnership PNG has with its uh, foreign foreign uh, with with the four nations uh, you yes. mentioned. Um, how does this uh, can also be used as a tool to boost good governance? Because those countries are, of course, many of them are much on on uh, good governance. They want to have the best. Uh, procedures, they want to have the best uh, schemes involved. Is this also an opportunity for uh, PNG regarding good governance? Of course, of course. Um, we, 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 we will work in collaboration with the four nations and I believe we have uh, established uh, embassies and um, um, 
in Papua New Guinea that, uh, that will collaborate with our uh, foreign affairs and of course our power companies and our departments to ensure that we roll those programs out transparently and uh, uh, we meet all the requirements that uh, uh, we are obligated to under the United Nations. So. Yeah, no, that's very good to, to hear that and definitely now in, in PNG. Um, and at the same time, I'm also curious, um, well, that's one of the last questions, uh, to not hold too much of your time, but um, despite gas, we talked a lot about gas, um, this, besides the rural electrification, but here on the conference we talked a lot about gas. At the same time, you also say sustainability, uh, renewables, uh, very important for PNG too. Um, what can be expected besides gas uh, in terms of renewables? Uh, I know there's an interesting biomass project going on around Ley. I know there are also solar projects with PNG Power at the moment. Um, what what is is uh, to what extent is the the old deadline of, of the old target of 2015 100% renewable still a realistic uh, target? Well, it it all comes back to uh, PNG Power and the uh, PPA arrangements because PNG Power wants. Uh, reliable and uh, affordable power. So those negotiations, we don't stay in it, we stay out of it. So it's up to PNG Power Board to choose whichever uh, energy uh, mix that they wish to go into so that they can have access to cheaper energy and uh, sustainable energy. Uh, th that is their call, it's not our call. No. But we want to make sure that under the National Energy Authority bill, it, open up, it will open up uh, new players into the retail part. So we, in future, we do not want to see only one power company uh, um, uh, having access to all the IPPs and PPS. We need another or two power companies to come in and provide competition. So they, they generate power, they dump all their power into the same grid, which is, of course, will be owned by the PNG government. And they can, ha they can uh, um, um, go aggressively on the street, do their sales to make sure that they um, they win customers and they, they, they provide uh, good savings for the people. But also uh, talking about other mixes, um, uh, we understand that there are other potentials aside from gas that is available in Papua New Guinea. In a clean energy, we go uh, hydro and it costs 10 million kina a megawatt if we want to uh, uh, invest into hydro. And there's a lot of potentials of hydro in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. We do also have uh, um, potentials on wind and solar, and we have grids running across across plains and valleys that is, is open for um, sunlight. Those, those uh, opportunities are there. Let us also not forget that uh, clean coal is also mentioned uh, in our mix, that we are open. And uh, we can understand that Australia uses 70% of coal, and uh, Indonesia is even more. We are in between, We're talking about clean energy. We must also understand that every steel and every cement that we buy from hardware is produced from coal energy because it's very cheap. Now, in Papua New Guinea, we have to question ourselves because we do have climate issues and we are talking about these big countries signing up all the um, uh, environmental agreements that they did overseas. And uh, we are being hammered by those big countries to say that, look, we must not go into coal, we must not go into heavy fuel because we will contribute to climate change. Yeah. But I want to also make us understand that the volume of Australia, 70% and more than 70% in, in Indonesia that they put into the atmosphere, we have to work out what kind of volumes they are putting in there against one or two power stations that we are using heavy diesel or we, are, we, are, we will be using um, um, clean coal. Yeah. How much are we talking about in percentage? Because those things many people in Papua New Guinea don't understand. We walk into a hardware, we buy steel, which is of course coal power was used, is used overseas to produce. We go and buy cement, they use coal power overseas to produce. So are we going to be, uh, uh, you know, be slavery to those big nations that are producing those uh, goods very cheaply and we have to continue to buy from them? Or will we use our own coal to have access to cheap energy and downstream revolution, all our natural uh, resources. And this is the challenge that I will bring to the cameras every time I go to talk about m energy mix in Papua New Guinea. So we will, now we, are, we will go crazy over gas because gas under DMO, it will flood the market and everybody will talk. But other sources of energy mix is still available for us to talk about. We have abundant coal reserves in the Gulf. Uh, we have also uh, more gas and more uh, uh, diesel will, I mean, fuel will be coming out of our ground. 
we must talk about how to uh, feed our economy, feed our people, have access to cheap uh, fuel, have access to cheap LPG gas, so that we can use in our uh, in our homes. Those things we must fit in Papua New Guinea first before we start thinking about exporting. Yeah. So this is what we will do. It's about a mix back, creating a mix back. Mix. Are you only not afraid that, um, because this is what some other countries are facing as well, if you would take a few power, uh, coal power stations uh, around the country, um, you would invest in that which could generate cheap, cheap energy for now, but that in a few years you would have to transit them anyway and on the long run they might create uh, extra costs? Yeah, like, like bio, bio um, mess in Markham Valley, it's a very good project. Uh, Biomass has a direct impact on, on the people on the ground. Yes. And of course, when you look at uh, implementing new power stations in provinces, the local content must be taken up. For example, provincial governments, and if it's a, it's a city authority there, they must be also taken on board on how they have to participate with the investment of uh, going into power. And those will be uh, new dynamics that will come into play to change how IPPs come, because in the past, uh, no local contents are built into uh, IPPs that were established many years ago. So those will come into play and we will open up to, we have to open up to different different mixes that, yeah. that will come into play. But at the end of the day, it's PNG Power's call on the, on, on the uh, PIP power purchase uh, agreement that they will reach with those yes. PPAs. Yeah. And in the future, we will encourage more retail companies, which means that PPAs can be uh, arranged between PNG Power and other independent, uh, other power retailers that may come into play. So those are the few. Yeah. This is the future that we want to see. You would like to create the right environment for competition, for for investors to come and to yes. set up different business, and you don't say no, especially to one, yes. one uh, case of the other. Perfect. I I believe that um, when we talk about clean energy and when we talk about firing up coal and heavy fuel, I believe that. Uh, we should take our percentage to Australia and Indonesia. Yeah. We should take at least 10% of their production, I mean, uh, their emissions. We should convert that 10% into megawatts and we can limit ourselves to certain production. Until they reduce theirs, we will continue to reduce ours. I think we should hold our neighbors uh, accountable in that manner rather than saying that how oh, we want and while they're still powering 70% to 90% of coal in their, in their country, we're in between. Uh, being the carbon sink for those uh, emissions that they're creating. Definitely, but I still hope uh, Lei or Port Moresby won't become a Jakarta because <laughs> that won't be. <laughs> but uh, but uh, no, I think that comes it quite well. At, at the same time, I think, like I said before, it's a very exciting time to be minister. I think of this uh, of this ministry right now, uh, Minister. I would like to thank you for your time, no for your information. And that's all we have for this episode of Business PNG. For more information, if you'd simply like to view this episode again, visit MTV online at the URL at the bottom of your screen. Or to simply join the conversation, like our page on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at the Twitter handle at Business PNG. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Mayan Gerari and this was Business PNG.